be doing a compression test procedure on the Mazda 626. The Mazda 626 does have a clear flood mode. In order to activate clear flood mode, you have to go wide open throttle while you crank the engine. All the way down. Hear that? Whoa. That kind of sucked. That should not have happened. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. Don't depress your foot and then crank. You have to do it both at the same time. Okay, and you don't want to wear out your starter while you do that. That's how you do a clear flood mode test. And why is that useful? Because when you're going to do a compression test, you can either, one, disable your fuel pump relay, or two, do a clear flood mode. And just to be safe because of that run on, I'm going to be going with option two. I'm going to disable my fuel pump just to make sure that no, no fuel is going to be flooding that cylinder. Okay, step one, verify that the battery is fully charged. I don't have my multimeter out, but I'm sure it's fully charged. Step two, warm up the engine to operating temperature. So you're gonna wait until your water temp needle gets about halfway, or when your cooling fans kick on. So that's gonna take about five minutes, give or take. While that is warming up, I'll go ahead and go over the compression tester that I got. It's a Summit compression tester. It's a cheapie. Uh, I think it was SUM9000, something like that. I'll put a link to uh, the exact model number that I got right here. This one has a release valve, and this one has both 14 millimeter and 18 millimeter threads. As you can see, the, the threads are not that long. Make sure you thread that in there well. And one question that I was trying to find out while doing some research online is how to calibrate your compression tester. And I couldn't find much of any information. The only thing that I really came across was, well, you could hook it up to a compressed air tank. And those compressed air tanks usually have a gauge on them. And you can compare your compression tester versus the pressure output of a compressor gauge. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. Um, otherwise, you would have to send this away to some company that does calibration. And if this is not their tester, they might not do that. Like, if you bought a Mac tool, I think you can send your Mac tester, Mac compression tester, back to Mac, and they, they'll they calibrate it for you kind of thing. But those are really expensive. These cheapy ones, you're basically on your own. You get what you pay for. You get a $20 compression tester, and you're not really gonna get much support. If this thing conks out or dies, you can go back to Summit and say, hey, this thing is crap, you know, give me a refund or whatever. That's about your only recourse. Now, one thing I noticed in the manual is that it says to do the test at 300 RPMs, which is about the normal cranking speed as you turn the engine over. It'll do about 300 RPMs. I've noticed in other places that there's a misprint that it says 3,000 RPMs. And I was like, well, how are you going to raise the engine idle speed or the engine speed while you crank it? I'm pretty sure that's a misprint. It's supposed to be 300 RPMs. So just FYI on that. Okay, the cooling fan came on, so time to shut her down. The only tool that you will need for this entire job is your ratchet set. I think it might be smart to actually wear gloves for this because these are pretty hot. Okay, now that you've got all your spark plugs out, the next thing is to remove the connecting harness from your distributor. On the manual, there will be two harness plugs. You will want to unplug the one on the right side. I don't know about V6. And then go into the fuse box and unplug your fuel pump relay. Now, on the FS Automatic, this is your fuel pump relay. On other years, let's say a 5th gen, it might be located right here. Same thing goes for the MX-6 and Ford Probe. So consult your... Uh, owner's manual or your factory uh, wiring diagram or factory fuse box diagram. Make sure that you get the right relay for the fuel pump. Okay. And zero out the gauge.
So that's all there is to doing a compression test. Just make sure you find a compression tester and test your cylinders. You can elect to first do a cylinder balance test, which will show you the general health of your cylinders. That way you can kind of pinpoint and you know which one might be the worst offender. Uh, but in my case, it was square all the way across the board. So I'm happy. I'm really happy. That was great. Uh, so that's how you do a compression test. Cool.